Well, I've put some scriptures together that will, in story flow, explain what Jesus Christ is going to do when he returns to this earth. Uh, I don't think you're, most of you, well, some of you, I better say it that way, some of you may not have time to turn to each scripture before I've read it and gone to another. I'm going to have to go through quickly. I have this sermonette in a little piece of paper that anyone can get from me later if you want to study these things at home. Uh, those of you who are watching the video can go back and catch the video two or three times if you want to get these scriptures. But let's start in Matthew 2, and I'm just going to read verse 6. That's where the wise men have been asked by King Herod about the birth of Christ. And they say, Thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of you shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Where did this thought come from? A governor to rule Israel? Was Jesus a governor to rule Israel? We'll go back to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, and again I'm going to read verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be, and we don't need to read that because it's not pertaining to what I'm saying. Turn over to, uh, and I better get my notes out because I'm already faltering here. Give me a moment to get my notes. Okay. Uh, we'll go from, that's my wrong notes. That's last week, the last time. We'll get it. Where are we, are we? Where are we? Are we? I've got too many notes in this Bible. I need to clean it out. I think here. Hey, okay. Uh, now go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. And I'm going to read verse 5. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king. A well, king governs, right? And a king shall reign and prosper and shall ex execute judgment and judgment in the earth. So Jesus is coming to do something in the earth. Now go to me with Daniel 2. Daniel 2. And I'm going to read verse 44, Daniel 2, verse 44. This is where Daniel is interpreting a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. So he's speaking of that dream here, and he's explaining that in the days of these kings, and there were ten, you can read the, the context to get the story, but in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never, how long is never? How long is never? But shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it will include these ten kings and their kingdoms. Okay? And the verse of that says, it shall stand forever. How long is ever? Or forever? Turn with me to the seventh chapter of Daniel, and I'm going to read verses 14, 18, and 27. 14. And there were, was great, there was given him dominion. Speaking of Christ, you can see up in verse 13. There was giving, given unto him uh, dominion, glory, and a kingdom, and all people, nations, and languages. That pretty well does it for everybody on the earth, doesn't it? shall serve him as his dominion is an everlasting, how long is everlasting? It's a long time, isn't it? But it's an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Verse 18. 
But the saints of the Most High <coughs> shall take the kingdom that Jesus comes here to establish and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Well, how long is ever and ever and ever? How long is that? Uh, one that might be a little hard for you to get is Micah. It's in the uh, Minor pro Prophets. So I'm going to go to my, uh, Micah 4 and ver read verses 3 and 7. And he shall judge a many, speaking of Christ, shall judge a many, uh, among many people. We've we heard tongues, nations, and people. And rebuke among nations far off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and nations shall not rise up. We still have nations rising up against na So this has not happened, right? Simple as that, it's not happened. Verse 7. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. He's speaking of Israel here. Because Israel has been cast off at this point. God is working with Gentiles. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, or from that time, even forever. Again, how long is forever? I think it's a long time. Now, do you believe these scriptures? Jesus did. Let's go back to Matthew. Jesus believed these scriptures. And I want Matthew 4, Matthew 4, and I'm going to read verse 23. And that's telling what Jesus did. Matthew 4, 23. What did Jesus come to do? Did he come to save the world? He hasn't done it so far. But what did he come to do? From that time, and you can read again the context to see from what time it's speaking of, but from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I'm reading the wrong scripture. I'm, I'm in number 16. What, where am I? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do this fast because we, we don't have a lot of time and I'm taking more time. I want verse 23. Okay, that's what I wanted. Verse 23 of Matthew 4. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's what Jesus did while he was here. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. You've been reading about the kingdom. Did Jesus really believe then that he's going to be ruling? Turn with me to Matthew 19, and I'm going to read verse 28 if I get the right one here. Yes, Matthew 19, 38. And Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that you who have followed me in the regeneration. Well, now, what's the regeneration? The renewing, the making over. We'll see later rest restoration. But those of you who, who followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, did Jesus mean that? Do you believe it? The disciples did. Turn over to Matthew 20. And I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can do that. I don't have time. But Matthew 20, verses 20 through 23. Uh, Two sons of Zebedee asked their mother to ask Jesus if he would give them special recognition in the kingdom. Look at his answer. I do want to read his answer. Let's see. Here it is, verse 23. And he said unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. And some of them did die horrible deaths. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand, it's not even going to happen. No, no, he doesn't, he doesn't say it's not going to happen. He says it's not mine to give. It's not the responsibility of Jesus Christ who sits on his right hand and on his left hand. He didn't say, hey, guys, I, I don't know where you get all this idea from. That kind of upset the other disciples. But let's turn to Acts 1 now. 
And we'll see that the other disciples, disciples also believed the same thing that these two men did. That Jesus was going to set up the kingdom of Israel. And I'm going to read verses 6 and 7 of, Matthew, of, of Acts 1. And when they were therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore or cause to be regenerated the kingdom to Israel? And again, he didn't say, boys, I don't know where you, where you get these ideas. I, maybe, maybe you took me for, for literal uh, when I said you're going to be ruling on, on 12 thrones. I didn't really. He, no, he didn't apologize for that. He said, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put. He didn't say, well, I'm not going to restore it. He said, it's just not for you to know. We don't know. And there's no way we can know the, the day and the hour, but we can know the time setting. Turn with me to Revelation 11. Those of you who are any kind of stud, a student of the Bible have heard of the seven trumpets as they're blown. This is the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet. Verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world... Peoples, nations, languages, the peoples of this world, those ten kings that we saw there in uh, Daniel and their kingdoms, the peoples of this world, are, or the kingdoms of this world, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of Jesus Christ. And he, Jesus Christ, shall reign forever and ever. How long is forever and ever? It's a long time, isn't it? Well, who will help Jesus in addition to the 12 disciples who will be on 12 thrones judging Israel? Turn back to Revelation 5. And I'm going to read verses 9 and 10, Revelation 5, 9 and 10. And, one, well, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take, speaking of Jesus Christ, Worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So the ten kings that Daniel spoke about, which is yet to be in the future, it's future coming, and their kingdoms, and your neighbors, and your cousins, and your relatives who are not called today, will be put into the kingdom of God. And look at verse 10. You have made those people who are redeemed by Jesus Christ, kings and priests, and they will reign upon the earth with Jesus Christ because that's where he will be for eternity. Because that's how long forever and ever is. It's eternity. If you'll stand, we'll turn to another song and sing. <laughs> 